Hello everyone, I'm Satyajit and welcome back to my channel. You're watching the Python course playlist and today's video is on Python data structures. We shall be deep diving into the tuples part. In the last video, we talked about lists and today's video is all about tuples. I hope you are already clear with the previous topics. If not, please go back to the videos in the playlist and study them. Link to the videos are already in the description below. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified on my future videos. As I told in the last class, we have gone through the lists part. Today's topic is all about tuples. So let's try to understand what tuples mean. And then we'll also talk about the basic differences between lists and tuples. So tuples are actually an ordered sequence of mixed data types uh, written as comma separated elements within parentheses. By nature, they are immutable. That means you cannot edit a tuple. Let's say you have four elements in a tuple, and if you want to edit the third element or the fourth element or the first element, it's not quite possible because of this immutability characteristics of tuples. The same is quite possible in lists, but not possible in tuples. It has a fixed length. Now you can initialize a tuple just by this. You can look at this particular example, tup1 equals to a1 dfp. I would say tuples and lists are almost similar, but yeah, based on the requirement, you will have to initiate your data structures. That's how you use it. So in some cases, you might have to use list. In some cases, you might have to use tuples as well. So let's try to discuss about the functions of tuples in details. Now, before going that, let's talk about the differences between lists and tuples so that you have a better understanding which category or which data structure to use in which particular scenario. Now, you can look at this particular example. The first point, items surrounded by square brackets are basically lists items surrounded by circular bracket it's a mistake just ignore it for now so items are uh, surrounded in parentheses or you call it as round braces are basically your tuples lists are mutable in nature you can access a list easily you can edit a list update a list you, have, you want to change some uh, contents of the list it's quite possible it's not possible in tuples we, we should also mention about the available methods in, in internally within them, right? In list, we have more than 40 available methods, I would say 42 to 43 methods. In tuples also, we have almost around 30 to 35 available methods. The fourth point is going to be a little bit important because if content is not fixed and keeps on changing, then we should go for lists. Now, if your content is fixed and never changes, then we should go for tuples. That, that's a decision making thing which I have to do as a developer when you are developing certain things in Python. Now list objects cannot be used as keys for dictionaries. So when you are using a dictionary, you cannot list objects as keys, but you can use tuple objects as keys. The reason being because in case of lists, the keys should be hash table and immutable. Okay, that's the property, that's the characteristic. In order to have immutability characteristics, we cannot use lists. So there has to be tuples as keys. So these are the basic differences between lists and tuple. Let's jump on to the practical part. So again, very similar to lists, we will also talk about a similar kind of functionalities or we'll discuss the similar kind of methods which we already discussed in it. Let's try to create our first tuple. Let's say I will name it as tup1. Maybe I'll name it as Let's say physics, 90, 100, biology, something like that. And let's try to print it. Let's try to print a type of tuple. Now it's in curly braces. The type is tuple. Let me create another one with square braces. And let's see. See, the differences between tuple and list, right? This is how it has been has to be done now let's just name it like top one is not uh, let's it's let's name it as list one so that it's easier for us to uh, you know, understand and take care so let's say i want to access elements now if i want to access the first element of a list sorry the yeah, the second element of a list i would go for list of one that means list one of first index so indexing starts from zero if you want to access the first element you have to use zero physics Similarly, I will do it for tuple as well. Top one, zero is physics. Now, let's say I want to update physics to chemistry. 
so let's do it in case of list equals to chemistry now i will try to print the list okay it has changed let's do the same activity in case of tuple sorry yeah it it was successful because if you remember in the second step we had created this list using tup1 so in memory it was already having tup1 as a list right that was the reason it was successful so don't get carried away with that so tuple of 1 of 0 equals to chemistry when i try to assign this particular value even before the print statement the error is in this line itself because tuple object does not support item assignment the same thing is possible in list we are able to update it but not possible in tuple so let's say i will print my tuple so it's not getting printed because of the error let's do it in a separate line it is still physics 1900 biology so the elements or the contents are not changed now let's move ahead and understand some other terminologies now as i told that tuples are initiated with round braces right with parentheses but even if you don't provide that let's say i will pro name it as new tuple even if i don't provide it it will still be called as a tuple so there are two different ways how you can create your tuples if you want to give round braces you can so you can do this way or else if you even don't provide anything it will still be considered as a tuple now let's talk about single value tuples now what is single value tuples for example i will create a new variable variable x equals to 1 now what is what what will be the type of this variable 1 uh, sorry variable x obviously it will be integer right quite simple let's go slowly ahead let's try to make it using round braces now what it will be called as it is just a single element it will still be an integer let me run it and show you it will still be called as an integer so does that mean a tuple cannot hold a single value it can now how it can hold single values just have to add a comma now if you want to if i if i want to run this particular code see so variable x equals to one comma that means it's a tuple type now let's try to print this variable also so it's tuple type and it it has one comma that means it has just one element so this is the property of a single value tuple this is otherwise known as a single value tuple let's try to use the indexing like how to create indexes like how to access the indexes like how to access the contents of a tuple okay let's talk about indexing in tuple let me just write down the create a markdown indexing in tuples so let's try to create another top tuple maybe i'll just copy paste this one okay so i have created a tuple let me print it out well it's physics 1900 biology so it has four elements now how do i access the first element very similar in string if you just go back to the previous classes when we were talking about the string variables let's say string var equals to hello so if i want to access the first character i was doing like this right so i will i was able to access the first character similarly in lists also if i want to access the first character i will go for zero if i want to access the last character i will go for minus one right if i want to access the first two characters i will go for zero to two right this is the slicing uh, uh, characteristics so slicing we will learn in the next topic like in the next five minutes but yeah for now let's talk about the indexing part so similarly the way we access string the way we access list similarly we will do it for tuples as well now i will not have to define the tuple again because tuple one is already defined okay tuple one of zero will print me physics tuple one of minus one 
will print me biology tuple one of one will print me 90 right as simple as that so this is basically the indexing feature of a tuple now let's talk about the slicing part again as I told concepts are going to be very similar and usage is also quite similar the, like if you learn it for a single data type or a single data structure the same things are applicable for all almost all okay. now let's talk about the slicing part so again I will define the same tuple tuple 1 equals to physics 1900 biology now if I want the first two first two elements of a tuple top 1 0 com colon 2 first two character first two elements that means it starts from 0 and it will go to go till 2 minus 1 index right now if I want to show the last character last element it will be minus 1 if I want to show the last two elements that means from minus 2 colon empty that means from minus 2 till the end if I just print it it will be 100 biology same goes with lists also right okay now I think we are clear with the slicing part let's go ahead and understand how to deal with the concatenation part concatenation in tuples okay so let me define two different tuples let me do it this way this is a session top two session on tuples okay so i have two tuples tuple 1 and tuple 2 now let's concatenate it so the easiest way to concatenate is final top equals to top 1 plus top 2 and let's print it this is a session on tuples right now there are some other operations as well let me just create a markdown and note it down for you all some min max operations let's say in future you might need what is the maximum value in that particular tuple let's say I'll define top 1 equals to 1 2 3 4 5 10 20 7 something like that now if I do max of t tuple 1 so it gives me 20 mean of tuple 2 one gives me one average of tuple one okay average is not there my bad mean operation is also not there it's okay so we will do sum of top one so max min and sum so I'll have to see if we have the average operation on tuple or not I'm not pretty sure about that average operation in tuples okay so there is no such inbuilt functionality but yeah if you want to create average and all those things that's quite possible you just have to convert it into lists or maybe you can access each element and you know make the average like separately so it's okay nothing to worry about now our next topic is going to be sorted like how to sort a tuple Sorting a tuple, let's say again I will just define this tuple. Maybe I'll just do some shuffling four, two, three, one, like this. Now, how to sort it? Now, obviously, sort operation, sort method won't work on tuple. Let's just run it and see. As I told, sort is not defined. We don't have that sort operation. Instead of that, we have sorted operation. If I do sorted, then I am able to sort a tuple. You can see it's sorted in the ascending order, right? Now let's also talk about nested tuples. 
Okay. Now, what is a nested tuple? Let's say I define my tuple one equals to maybe one, five, ten, biology, Python, Java, something like that. So let's print tuple. Okay, this is how the tuple looks like. What is the type of this? It will be tuple for sure. Okay, so this is how the tuple looks like. Now let's say I want to access this particular element. How do I access it? Or how do I get the value of that particular element? So what I can do is tuple of, first of all, we will go through this element. This is which element? Zero, one, two, three, four, five. You can do five or you can do minus one also, up to you. Five or minus one is going to be same, right? Now minus one, then zero will give me Python. Similarly, five zero will also give me Python. Okay, so you can go from left to right, you can go from right to left, up to you. So this is how you can access a nested tuple. And this is called as nested tuple because you have a tuple inside a tuple. Okay, you have a tuple as an element inside a tuple. That's basically a nested tuple. So that's it for today's video. In the next session or in the next video, we will be talking about sets, dictionaries for the time being. And yeah, we have a lot of uh, course to cover. So if you, if you like the video, please like this video, share among your friends, subscribe the channel. Please go back to the channel and look at other videos. There are some interesting videos and there are some videos in plan to be uploaded very soon. I hope you like my channel. Keep supporting guys. Thank you.